narthex uh, in the family we have the hallway at this time so we can walk in everyone please rise <laughs> blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked nor stands in the way of sinners nor sits in the seat of scoffers but his delight is in the law of the Lord and on his law he meditates day and night he is like a tree planted by streams of water that yield its fruit in its season and its leaf does not wither. In all he does, he prospers. The wicked are not so, but like the chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked shall perish. You may be seated. Brothers and sisters, we are gathered here this morning uh, to celebrate the life uh, of our beloved sister Rosalind Gilbert. Uh, and truly, uh, this is a celebration. Uh, the Bible is clear uh, that uh, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of one of his saints. Uh, and so even on today, uh, while we uh, mourn Rosalind's passing, uh, we can rejoice. Uh, that not only uh, has she transitioned from death to life eternal, uh, but that God has kept his promise uh, and received his daughter unto himself. Uh, and so today we've gathered to celebrate, uh, to celebrate the woman that she is, uh, to celebrate the legacy that she has left, uh, to celebrate the lives that she has touched. Uh, and so there is uh, cause for joy on today because she has placed her life and her hope uh, in Jesus Christ our Lord. Uh, and that means that even though uh, her body is no longer with us, uh, that she is still with us. And that she have, now has the gift of eternal life. And all who place their faith in Jesus will also see her again. Amen? Amen. Amen. So our service will proceed uh, with a New Testament reading. Uh, followed by a prayer by Brother Terrence Wallace uh, and a selection by uh, Brother Desmond Reed uh, in that order. Amen. New Testament scripture comes from Philippians chapter 4. Uh, Philippians 4 verses 4 through 8. 
uh, one of Roz's favorite scriptures. It says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, Rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. let us pray eternal God our father Lord we first come to you acknowledging that you are king you're Lord above everything and Lord that you specialize in the things that we find complicated those things are are complex and God we come to you God surrender with both hands open wide saying have your way God you've made a decision that we don't understand and we couldn't even phantom but for this woman of God, you've called home now. And for that, God, we say thank you. Because to be absent from the body is to be present with you, Lord. And so, God, we pray now in the name of Jesus that you would send your healing to this family as they process what has just taken place. God, but I know you to be a mother to the motherless. And Father, do what only you're able to do in the midst of these circumstances. I pray, God, in the mighty name of Jesus, that you would reveal your will and your way. I pray for strength for Jamise and Jamal as they try to go forward. God, I pray that in the midst of this memorial service on today, that you would do something supernatural. Give them a strength that's above anything else. And I pray that on the days to come and the weeks to come, God, that you will blow their minds, exceed their expectations on the life that you have for them. And God, if there's anybody here today that don't know you, I pray that they will look at this woman of God's life and her testimony, that they will come to know you in the midst of their grieving. God, we thank you, we praise you, we honor you. And now, God, in the mighty name of Jesus, let your will be done in this place on this day in your son Jesus name amen and we'll have a selection by Desmond Reed by Damon Reed I'm sorry
on trips with her. We had our little looks in the back that we all had when something out of the ordinary, we'll look at each other and say, ooh, okay, we got this. She's been with us for 12 years. Oh my God, I miss her. And we've all, as a family of us, it's devastating for our church and us just to miss a person that's been so close to our heart. And I know your mom loved you all so much. When she was doing the single parenting ministry, that was her dream and she, oh my God. You all don't understand how loving person she is. She, well, I just, the conversations that you have, that you had with a person, it keep coming to your mind on how you laugh and love a person. It's just a, it's a lot. It's a lot for us here. And she lives around the corner from me. I just walk around when I'm walk, walking and we were walking apart. This is just a lot. She's like a sister. I mean, I, I, I don't know what else to say, but I'm deeply sorry, God, guys. You're going to guide your way. I love you all. We love you. It's an ugly. To the family, we pray your comfort and your strength as God's will unfolds. You know how tough it can be. I, I represent my grandmother, Marie Hudson, uh, as she would call her Rod, and my grandmother have been friends of just short of 40 years. In a time period where people have a hard time being friends for 40 minutes, right? we, we, we know how amazing that is. And in that time, we felt and experienced nothing but the love and the grace of God through Rod. I know that for all the major events that have gone on in our lives, my parents' lives, my grandmother's lives, and even mine, I've looked up and saw my grandmother's smiling, approving face, and right next to her, I saw Raza's smiling and approving face. That 10,000-watt smile will be missed, and it will be missed that it doesn't light up those wounds, but we can be inspired by what she showed in her life, and we can be inspired to value the friendship and relationships and connections that we have, and those things will bless those who are around us like it has blessed our family. And so we thank you for this opportunity to speak on this, and we love you guys. And anything you need, you let us know. We will be there for you guys. Love you very much. out and uh, have fun. And every time someone uh, retired, we would always put on these skits. That's Rob. She would put these skits on. And one we did was uh, I was James Brown. <laughs> and we were singing for our supervisor, uh, Miss Charlene Kelly was telling her, you know, I was singing, please, please don't go. And I was singing on the, on the stage and Rob, she was going putting the cape on my back. So whenever time I would stop, she put the cape on me and I picked over the cape off me and put it back and started singing again. And she just got
got mad with me, but we had fun. It was, it was really nice. <laughs> and another thing, too, uh, I can always remember Roz, because I see that smile, that smile that her daughter had. That's, that's Roz's smile. Ah, there was something there. And life is, man, you never know about life, but you know, if you have uh, friends or relatives, keep close to them. I will also have Roz. I treated her like my little sister because I was, she would always get mad with me, but we would always laugh it off because she was, she was Roz was something else. She was, she was a beautiful person. She had that beautiful smile. And if you needed help, she would help you, you know. And what can I say? I, I see by the people that's out there, you know, they knew Roz and they knew her and they, they loved her smile. Can I say that's that's life, man. And another thing too, uh, to the uh, to her kids, I would say keep the faith, keep the faith in God, and He will deliver you too. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. I'm Kelly. I'm Roslyn's stepdaughter. Uh, I met her 39 years ago when I was two years old. And she has always been a beautiful woman and truly like a second mother. Blending families is a hard thing to do. And I never felt like she was anything less than a mom. Uh, she had three children. She was there when my first was born. She came to the hospital to visit her. She never missed a birthday, you know, with letting them know that she loved them. Uh, and she will, she will truly be missed. She has been in a, an amazing part of my life, my childhood, and my adulthood. And I would say to Sharifa Jamal, you know, as a mother and knowing your mom, she would truly want you to honor God first and to keep going, to find your happiness, to find love, and live a life that is authentic and happy for yourself. And along the way, you know that me and your dad, my kids and family who have you, so we'll love you and continue to uphold you. Just thank and praise God that I have the opportunity. 
opportunity um, to uh, walk this journey with Rosalind. Uh, Rosalind and I uh, met at um, our previous church. And when I say a quiet, humble, uh, gentle spirit she was, that was Rosalind. Um, Janice, I call her my Janice. <laughs> and Jamal, I just thank the praise God for you too. Uh, at that, uh, when we were at Shiloh, they embraced us. They loved us. And Roz ended up coming here to Hillcrest Baptist Church with us. And she was one of the first members when we got here um, in our women's ministry. She and I connected and we called each other our heart friends. And every Monday, she and I would text each other. And even after we had to change um, heart friends, she and I continued to be heart friends. Um, I just love what she gave me. I love um, our friendship, our relationship. And she will truly be missed. Um, Jamal and Janice, you know that I am here. Um, Janice is still my Janice. <laughs> and I'm here for anything that you may need. Um, Roz and I was one of uh, a kind. She, we would look at each other sometimes having the same outfit, uh, same jewelry. We would just smile. But I am truly going to miss those inside labs and just her uh, being here for me when I needed to just open as the first lady here at Hillcrest Baptist Church. So um, mom is definitely going to be missed, but as he said, you and Jamal know she has already laid the foundation and is uh, to stand firm on the word of God. That's what helped her. That is definitely what will keep you. Uh, again, I love you all. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Roz was not only a veteran for the Lord, she was a veteran for this country. And I was fortunate enough to work with her for many years. And she was a blessing to everyone that she came in contact with. Her beautiful personality and all. And at this time, I would like for everyone that she worked with to please stand up. When it, when it came to Roz, and not just Roz, but all of my coworkers, we are family. We've always been family. And we're going to continue to be family. And Roz is a part of that family. And I just want to say our sincere condolences to the family. We're praying for you. And thank you. Amen. Good morning, family. Good morning. My name is Master Sergeant Clarice Hayes.
Shiloh Missionary Baptist Church. Anyone here from Shiloh, raise your hand if you can, stand up. Before there was Hillcrest, it was Shiloh Missionary Baptist Church. We had the pleasure of having Roz in my Sunday school class. I was class number seven, and it was always a pleasure to see her smile. She light up the place, and she always had something to impart to us that would give us food for thought. And as I sit here and look at Jamal, and I can remember when he was just ten and playing his Game Boy. <laughs> so I'm Denise has grown into a beautiful young lady, and she would be looking down and smiling at what you guys have done. I just want to leave you with some words of encouragement. Life is too short to wake up in the morning with regret. So love the people who treat you right and forget about the ones who don't. And believe that everything happens for a reason. If you get a pen, take it. If the change changes your life, let it. No one said it would be easy. Just promise to walk. It will be worth it. May the Lord keep giving you strength to win these days. I look forward to seeing you guys at Shiloh at some point in time. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. God is good. He is so good. Roz was a quiet storm. We did not talk every day. We did not see each other every day. But I will tell you, every holiday, when it was time to we all met in the grocery store and our favorite was buying greens. And sometimes when we were there, we, she would say, Turn, what, what, what? We always wait till the last minute. Who are we going to get the greens from <laughs> at this time of day? I say, Well, Roz, I say, You know, we got caught again. <laughs> um, anyway, Roz is also a veteran. We were veterans together, and whenever she wanted to be better with Mark, she talked to us. Uh, so God bless her for that, for serving her country. And uh, also, um, we ask that you continue to pray for the family. She would come up to the school and she would make them proud when she came up. Right, because your mom was bad. <laughs> <laughs> and Janice was almost an angel. <laughs> and I just want to say I love you all. I'm sorry for your loss. And I'm grateful to be here this morning. Keep on keeping on. I love you all. God bless you all. Amen. Good morning and God bless everybody. Um, I went to school with Roz. We came up in the St. Louis School District together. And there's something about Roz Roz had this beautiful smile, and she also would, you know, she would joke, and she had that laughter, and it was something about, I mean, it's been 40, what, 50 years now, and her laughter is something that I always remember, and I think we all do, um, just on behalf of the class, her classmates from St. Louis Senior High School, we all love Roz, we all love Roz, 
to another group of guys. And I feel that she definitely uh, you know, is a gift of God. And thank you so much. family was cognizant that everyone couldn't make it uh, to the homegoing service uh, next week in uh, East St. Louis. And so if you have uh, remarks to give, we ask you to do so at this time uh, because next Thursday we'll have a tighter window. Amen. All right. Thank you everyone who came to share uh, on today. Uh, wonderful reflections about a wonderful woman. Uh, and I'm glad somebody told the truth that Jamal was bad. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Sometimes at funerals, people don't tell the truth, but I'm glad the truth came out today. Amen. Amen. So at this time, we'll have a reading on obituary by Kelly Williams. Life Reflection, Rosalind Vanessa Gilbert. In the end, it's not the years in your life that count, it's the life in your year. Unknown author. That famous quote is descriptive of Rosalind Vanessa Gilbert, best known as Ros. She lived fully, laughing, learning, and loving. She was kind, independent, adventurous, a true friend, and a no-nonsense kind of woman. Above all else, she loved the Lord. She was known to say, a life without God is like an unsharpened pencil. It has no point. Roz was born to the union of Sammy Elizabeth Jones and Alexander Jerome Jones Sr. on August 18, 1955 in St. Mary's Hospital in St. Louis, Missouri, and was the sixth born of nine siblings. She departed this life on September 27, 2023. At an early age, Roz was baptized at her family's church, Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church in East St. Louis, Illinois. She attended District 189 School, Christmas Attics Elementary School, Clark Junior High, and was a 1973 graduate of East St. Louis Senior High. It was while in high school that she learned to sew and discovered her love for fashion design. She began to make her own clothes, which everyone wanted to borrow, and would use this skill throughout her life. Her education included earning an associate degree, and while working in a training program for the U.S. government in Columbus, Ohio, she simultaneously joined the United States Armed Forces as a reservist in 1978. This new role allowed her to learn more about computer science and information technology. As an ambitious young woman, she applied for a position as a systems analyst with the Defense Contract Management Agency that would land her in Chicago, Illinois, where she met her love, Jimmy Gilbert. The two married on February 14, 1992. Together, they were sharing welcoming two children, Janice Jasmine Gilbert and Jamal Keenan Gilbert. They worked to pour their best into their children and to instill in them great character and values. As her children grew up, Roz recommitted her life to Christ and joined Shiloh Baptist Church, where her children would be baptized. She served on the usher board and volunteered around the city of Chicago. After later joining Hillcrest Baptist Church, she served as president of the usher board and began her own ministry, Single and Parenting, which impacted the lives of many young women who were learning how to navigate parenting. When she was not serving at church, Roz enjoyed spending time with friends and family, enjoying live music, concerts, and taking her children on adventures, such as zip lining, rock climbing, and even to an improv club. Together, that was spontaneous and fun. She was a thrill seeker and a big kid at heart, bringing to life the phrase, dance, 
like no one was. When she thought no one was looking, she would often be caught with a headset dancing while cooking in the kitchen. She even began a new hobby and joined a running club with her daughter. They ran their first half marathon together in 2017. After retiring from the government in 2015, Roz made it a point to travel and learn how to trade stocks. Travel adventures led her to Israel, where she was baptized in the Jordan River by her pastor, the Reverend Adrian Roberts. Preceding her in death were her parents and brothers, Alexander Jerome Jones Jr., Albert R. Jones, and Anthony Jose Jones. In addition to her children, Jamise and Jamal, she will be mourned by siblings Darlito Von Lumpkin, Sharon Annette Rivers, Gail Stuckey, Michael Anthony Jones, and Portia Lynn Howard. Her legacy will continue to live on through her loved ones and so many friends. selection by Damon Reed. Thank you so much, Damon, for being here.
say thank you. Thank you, Lord. You say thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we just want you thank you lord oh god you've been so so good oh you've been so toward us, uh, faithful to keep your promises, uh, faithful in pursuing us, uh, calling us out of, your, out of our sin and to yourself, uh, faithful in sanctification, uh, teaching us, O oh Lord, how to obey your word, embrace you, revealing your love uh, morning by morning and day by day. Uh, Lord, truly you are the constant faithful in our lives, and for that we give you glory, honor, and praise. Now, Lord, we need to hear from your word, and so, Father, speak uh, by your word, uh, through your servant, by your spirit, and for your glory. In Christ Jesus' name we pray, and all God's people said amen. 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 Uh, brothers and sisters, I'm going to keep it short and sweet today. Uh, this is a memorial service. Uh, if you want to hear the rest of the story, meet us in East St. Louis next week. Uh, but uh, I do want to turn our attention uh, to Psalm 84 and 10. Uh, just one verse uh, from Psalm 84. Psalm 84 and 10. Uh, the text reads, For a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. Uh, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God uh, than dwell in the tents of wickedness. Now, when thinking about the life of Rosalind, uh, this verse kept coming to mind uh, because it expresses uh, her desire uh, for God uh, and her desire for God's house. Uh, and we saw this over and over again uh, throughout her life, and you heard about it over and over again through the remarks uh, of her friends and loved ones. Uh, as Veronica mentioned, we met Roz in 2005. Uh, got called to uh, Shiloh Baptist Church, uh, 9211 South Justine, to serve as assistant pastor, uh, and she was serving on the usher board. Uh, some four years later, the Lord called us here, uh, and uh, since Roz lived down the street, uh, she prayed and made a decision to come and uh, join us here. Uh, but Veronica and I laughed in the beginning because we knew Roz and she was good people. Uh, but Roz might have said 20 words to me at Shiloh uh, in four years. Uh, Roz was kind of quiet uh, and she would investigate you. Uh, she'd check you out for a little while, make sure you was for real. Uh, and if she saw enough realness in you, then she might say something to you. Uh, but Roz was gonna check you out first. Uh, and so she, she may have said 20 words to me at Shiloh. Uh, and so I was surprised that she came and joined. Uh, but once uh, we got to know each other, uh, she opened up. Uh, she would tell us uh, about her, her work life. Uh, she would tell us about uh, the, her passion, uh, her two children, uh, Jamise and Jamal. She would tell us uh, about uh, being a woman in the, in the service uh, and the struggle she had as a black woman in the Army. 
Uh, she would tell us uh, about uh, the highs and lows of life uh, and what she had learned along her journey. Uh, and she became a friend uh, and a sister beloved. Uh, and so I'm just going to touch, touch on this verse for a moment uh, because it was Roz's desire uh, to be in the house of the Lord. Uh, and not just because of the building. Uh, we talk about church sometimes as if uh, it's just these four walls. But it's really not the four walls that was Rod's desire. Uh, it was her desire to be in God's presence. Uh, there are church buildings everywhere, uh, but all of them don't glorify God. Uh, there are church buildings everywhere, but all of them don't preach his word, lift up his name, and seek his will. Uh, there are church buildings everywhere, and wherever believers gather together to worship, uh, we ought to lift up God's name. Uh, we ought to proclaim his word, uh, and we ought to seek his will. Um, Ross saw that happening by the grace of God here at Hillcrest, and she decided that this, one, this was the place where she wanted uh, to call home uh, because she saw a glimpse of God's glory. Uh, and that's really what church should be. Uh, it should be brothers and sisters gathering together uh, to worship the true and living God, uh, to learn his word and learn how to live out his will. Uh, but when we gather together, we ought to have a little glimpse uh, of God's glory. You ought to see a little bit of heaven uh, when the saints of God get together, a little bit of his love, a little bit of his grace, a little bit of his forgiveness, a little bit of his compassion, uh, a little bit of heaven. Uh, and so Raj, she had a passion for being in God's presence. Uh, it wasn't long uh, after she joined that she joined Bible class. Uh, it wasn't enough for her just to be a Sunday member. She wanted to know how to understand the word of God because she had issues and she wanted to know God's answers for her issues. Uh, sometimes uh, we uh, try to figure out our answers uh, for our issues uh, as if we are the great diagnosis and the great doctor. Uh, but God knew that there was a doctor greater than her, uh, the one who created her. And so she wanted his word uh, to deal with her problems. And as she learned to deal with her problems, uh, she learned how to walk in obedience with God. Uh, and as she loved the Lord more, she learned God's word more. Uh, and so we would have conversations from time to time, and we'd be talking about something, and then she'd mention how this verse that she had learned helped her to deal with this issue that she was confronting, how she learned how to be anxious for nothing, uh, how she learned how to trust in the Lord with all her heart, and lean not to her own, own understanding, uh, and how hard it was weaning yourself away from believing in yourself. All of us were born with us. Uh, and from the day you were born, you start to talk to yourself and influence yourself. Uh, and from the moment you get saved, you have to start transferring your trust. Uh, because we all trust in us with all our heart. Uh, but to be a Christian, uh, you have to learn how to trust in the Lord. Uh, and you do a good job of deceiving yourself. Uh, it won't take long for you to start rolling back in your mind and remembering times where you talk to yourself into doing something you know you should have done in the first place. Uh, but because you're always talking to you, it's easy for you to deceive yourself. Uh, trusting in the Lord means learning to trust his will over your will. And she learned that because she had a passion for being in God's presence. Uh, but she also had a passion for serving uh, in God's presence. As she grew closer to God, she learned that she'd rather spend time with God and in God's house uh, than anywhere else. That's what the psalmist says here in 84 and 10, for a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere, and I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord than to dwell uh, in tents of wickedness. Uh, Roz uh, had a passion for God's presence, but she had a passion for serving in God's presence. And so uh, you heard just a few moments ago about how it wasn't long before she started asking, where can she get involved? How can I help, Pastor? How can I serve? Uh, and so since she had been an usher before, and she, she jumped into being an usher at Hillcrest, uh, serving at the door of the house of the Lord, uh, helping other people as they came in. Uh, and, and the ushers learn here that, you know, any day uh, you can be helping somebody meet God. Uh, people come to church for all kinds of reasons, and sometimes they come to church as their last resort. 
This is my last hope, God. If you don't help me today, I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, and so you got to have ushers that have the right attitude. Uh, you, you can't have an angry usher at the door. Giving people the evil look like they're wasting their time. No, you have to have people who know that when someone comes through their doors, they're coming to see God. Uh, they're not coming to see us. They're not coming to see the preacher. They're coming to see God. Uh, and so you need to help them as much as you can without getting in their way. Help them to have an encounter uh, with God. So since Roz was afraid of a challenge, you heard how she liked to run, how she liked to rock climb. Uh, it wasn't long before I approached her and said, I need you to lead the ushers. I need you to step up uh, and lead this ministry. Uh, she said, okay, Pastor, I'll pray about it. Uh, and then she came back and says, I think this is what the Lord is having me to do. Uh, and she did a great job uh, of leading the ushers. Uh, and so whenever something was going on, the church was having a service, all we had to do was call Roz. Roz, we need four ushers for a funeral this Saturday. We need three ushers for a conference this week. We need six ushers for this or for that. No problem, Pastor. We'll take care of it. Uh, but she led them also by loving them, uh, by being a sister to them, uh, by sharing her life with them. Uh, so that's why uh, you heard uh, the break in their hearts when they came before you uh, to give their remarks because they've lost a sister. But they haven't really lost her because we know where she is. Uh, but that does not stop the present pain. I told you before that precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Uh, and so it is a precious pain. Uh, painful because we won't see her for right now. Uh, but precious because her God has received her back into herself. Uh, and we will see her again. Uh, that leading the ushers was just one challenge. She went on uh, because the Lord had put another burden on her heart. Uh, she stayed after Bible class one day and said, Pastor, can we talk? Sure, of course we can. Uh, we had a conversation. She says, oh, when I was raising Jamal and Jamise, uh, it was rough. And I didn't have anybody to show me how to apply God's word to raising my kids. She said, we need a ministry like that. And so she did some research, and I did some research. Uh, we found single and parenting. I sat down with her, showed her the model, and she said, oh, yeah, I can do that. Uh, and so Roz would meet here on Friday nights and help other single brothers and sisters learn how to parent their children in a godly way, how to apply God's word to their situation, uh, how to love their children the way God loves us, uh, how to show them the truth of God's word and the grace of God at the same time. Uh, and so what God had shown her, she just invested into other people uh, because she loved God. And she loved other people. Uh, but I also want to tell you that Roz didn't take no mess. <laughs> uh, if you really know Roz, uh, this is talking about that eyebrow raising up every once in a while. Uh, if you really knew Roz, every once in a while, you know, she puts you back in your place. Uh, if you were just going too far or doing too much. Uh, and I didn't get to see it that much at church. You know how y'all act real good in front of y'all pastor. Uh, but we went to Israel. Uh, church went to Israel, uh, and so we spent 10 days uh, in Israel viewing the Holy Land, uh, and the one day we were coming down from the Mount of Olives, uh, and we were making our way on to wherever the next stop was that day, but as we were coming down the Mount of Olives, we were coming down like a cobblestone road. It's kind of rough downhill walk. It had been raining that morning. As a matter of fact, the picture in the hallway from Israel is of that same day. It rained the whole day we took our group picture, uh, and so uh, one sister slipped uh, and failed that day uh, because it was the cobblestones were wet. But as we came down uh, and made the turn to the street, there were some vendors there, some, some Iranian brothers and some Palestinian brothers. They were trying to sell different, different little trinkets and all of that. And it was probably a group of about 20 of us. Uh, and so I'm trying to make sure, you know, everybody knows where the bus is. We're getting back on the bus to go to the next step. And I look back and like a block back, Still with the vendors, like surrounded by the vendors is Roz. And so I'm like, oh, can't, can't leave one of the sheep. So I go running back there uh, to see what's going on. And the guy's really hustling hard, trying to get Roz to buy whatever this little trinket was. And he's all in her face, you know, come on, sister, I'll give you, you know, I cut the price down a little bit, cut the price down a little bit. And 
tour guide already told us, you know, we, we can find these at a better price somewhere else, so don't buy nothing. And so I came back and reached through the crowd and grabbed her by the arm, said, come on, Roz. Uh, and the, the guy got real mad at me, kind of slapped at my hand, and so I'm like, okay, now you finna see South Side of Chicago. <laughs> And so I stepped in his face, and two guys came running like, uh-oh, Pat's about to punch somebody. Uh, and so me and Roz was, was up against the, like the 12 people. Uh, and so I pushed the guy back, like, don't put your hands on me, don't put your hands on her. And Roz like, Pastor, I got it. I ain't worried about them. <laughs> you don't even have to come back and get me. I'm like, oh, no, I'm not going to leave you here. But that East Boogie almost came out on them. Like, they, they thought they was going to surround us. Uh, but you don't want Roz to get mad at you. She would put you back in your place. Uh, but she would lovingly correct you because she had been lovingly corrected uh, by her God. That's why she'd rather spend time with God than anywhere else. Last time I saw Roz in uniform, we were preparing for a funeral here uh, for another loved one, another one of our members. Uh, and Roz was sick herself. Uh, but she had heard that we didn't have enough ushers that day, and she put her uniform on, uh, made her way back to the building, came in the door to serve one more time. Uh, I sent her home uh, because she wasn't, do she wasn't doing well. Uh, but that just showed you how much, how dedicated she was to serving the Lord. She'd rather be in the house of the Lord than anywhere else. So, a couple Wednesdays ago, when her body couldn't fight anymore, the Lord who she loved, uh, the Lord who she always wanted to spend time with, showed up uh, to spend time with her. And he said, that's enough, sis. It's time to go home. And so you can now rest because Roz is at rest. She's at rest in the house of the Lord. She's at rest in the presence of her Savior. Uh, and she's at rest because God keeps his promises. Uh, he promised to never leave her or forsake her. Uh, he promised uh, to be her savior and her guide. He promised to be her good shepherd. Uh, and he promised that when she went to sleep, she would wake up in his presence for all eternity. Because he knew she'd rather be in the house of the Lord than to be anywhere else. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you. For Lord, we know, as much as we try to avoid it, that this day is coming for all of us, uh, that none of us will live here forever. Uh, and so, Lord, let uh, Roslyn's life be an example for each of us uh, to prepare for our eternity by trusting in you in time. Uh, not waiting, O oh Lord, to the last minute. Uh, not hoping that our good deeds will outweigh our bad. For your word clearly says that there is one Savior, and Jesus Christ is his name. That there's one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. And so, Father, we thank you that Roz has received you as Lord and Savior. And we thank you, Father, that you have kept your promise uh, to receive your daughter unto yourself. Now, Lord, be with this family as we continue to mourn. Uh, but, Lord, we don't mourn as those who don't have hope. Uh, we know uh, that you will return. Uh, crack the sky. The trump shall sound, and you shall reclaim your children. And we'll all be caught up to meet you in the air. Uh, therefore, we will be steadfast and unmovable always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that our labor is not in vain. In Jesus' name we pray, and all God's people say amen. amen. Brothers and sisters, uh, Ross's journey here is ended, uh, and now she is resting in the presence of her Savior. Uh, but your journey still continues, uh, and Ross would like nothing more uh, than to see you in eternity. But there's only one way for all of us to get there. And Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Uh, and it's an amazing claim, but it's an exclusive claim. Uh, 
which is amazing because Jesus says that no one can come to God except him. Uh, but it's exclusive because it's true. Uh, God only sent his only begotten son one time uh, to die for the sins of the world one time, uh, that all who believe in him may receive the gift of life. Uh, the last Adam came to do what the first Adam could not do. Uh, the first Adam failed to sin and passed on sin to all humanity. Uh, the last Adam died for sin, Jesus Christ, that all who believe in him uh, can be adopted into the family of God. Uh, so if you're here today and you're not sure what's going to happen when this day comes for you, uh, then let me introduce to you Jesus Christ. If you're here today and you want to accept him as Lord and Savior, uh, all you need to do is raise your hand. And after we give the benediction and prayer, I'll have a conversation with you right here in the sanctuary. If there's anyone here today uh, that wants to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, shall there be one? Second invitation is for those of you that uh, know that Jesus is Lord and Savior, but you don't have a church home know that Jesus is God, and you've accepted him and been baptized, but you don't have a body of believers that you meet with on a regular basis, uh, not just to hear someone preach the word, but to learn uh, how to apply the word of God to your situations and circumstances, uh, to be the man, man or woman God has called and created you to be, uh, to have a personal relationship with God, to love being in his presence, uh, and to enjoy being his son or daughter. That's you, and the second invitation is for you to join this local fellowship we call Hillcrest. Once again, if you uh, want to join this local body, just raise your hand, and I'll have a conversation with you uh, after the benediction. Shall there be one? Amen. Amen. We see there is none, but yet there is still room. Brothers and sisters, this concludes uh, our memorial service. Uh, but I do want to uh, let you know that the funeral service uh, for Rosalind Gilbert will be October 12th, uh, 10 o'clock awake, 11 o'clock funeral at Serenity Memorial Chapel uh, in Belleville, Illinois. Uh, from there, uh, we will proceed uh, take Ross to her final resting place uh, in Jefferson Barracks National Cemetery. Uh, so if you want to join the family there on October 12th, uh, please do so. Uh, let us have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for the life, uh, for the love, and for the legacy of Ross and Gilbert. We thank you, Lord, for creating her to be a daughter, uh, a wife, mom, an aunt, a friend, a sister in Christ. We thank you, Lord, that uh, she was a soldier for you uh, and a soldier for this company, for this country. Uh, and we thank you, Lord, for her service uh, on both fronts. Uh, thank you, Lord, that she was a fearless soldier. Thank you, Lord, that she was a faithful soldier. Uh, and we thank you, Lord, that you were faithful to her uh, even on her last day. Uh, now, Lord, uh, Jamal and Jamise and Mr. Gilbert and the entire family uh, need your comfort and your presence in the days ahead. Uh, Lord, touch each and every one of them. Guide them by your grace. Surround them in your love. Uh, walk with them uh, through the morning process. At the appropriate time, Father God, lift up their bow down here uh, and restore their joy. Now may the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of his eternal covenant, equip you with everything good that you may do his will, working in us that which is pleasing in his sight, through Christ Jesus, to whom be glory forever and ever, and all God's people said amen. 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 This concludes our service. Uh, you may come and greet the family at this time.